It goes like this. Someone complains that they aren't enough original movies, then a movie comes along that looks like nothing that's been done before. There's an interesting premise, some notable people are working on it, so far things look promising. Then when the movie comes out and you go see it, that's when you realize, man, that movie sucked. That is the unfortunate case of Suburbicon. I could have you killed in no time. I could kill you too. <laughs> Hey there guys, how are you? It's me, the Canadian Rebuff, with a review of Suburbicon. This comes from a script written by the Coen brothers, who you may recognize for their work as prolific writers and directors. With credits such as Fargo, Burn After Reading, The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men, Bridge of Spies, and the 2010 remake of True Grit. George Clooney and Grant Hasloff also honed their writing skills, making it the third time they've worked on a script together after Monuments Men and The Ides of March. Matt Damon stars as Gardner, a man who's trying to provide a good life for his family in an idealistic white picket fence neighborhood. After two goons kill his wife for his failure to pay off his debt to the mob, Gardner hatches a plan to protect his son and get revenge. Well, that's the movie the trailer sells you on. Although Hail Caesar wasn't a bad movie, it was a setback for the Coen brothers. Now this is the movie business, where if you have a good reputation, people are more likely to overlook your screw-ups. And your bad movies too. In the case of Joe and Ethan Coen, all they needed was another hit and they'd be back in business. However, if Hail Caesar was a misstep, then Suburbicon is a huge tumble. Despite everything this movie has going against it, I did like what Julianne Moore brought to the table. She definitely could have been written better, but she did have this secrecy and devil may tell air. And for the short time he was in there, Oscar Isaac gave a clever performance as the insurance investigator. Not a mobster. Again, that's the part of the trailer. He knows how to bait you into telling the information he wants, he then closes the trap and seals you in. Really disappointed he wasn't a key character to the story. but. If you want to be in Star Wars, that means sacrificing screen time elsewhere. Now, I'm about to compliment on a factor that I don't usually comment on when it comes to movies. The production design. You can tell that the sets were built to be as authentic as possible, and they had all the vibrant colors that made the neighborhood seem dreamlike. The music was pretty good as well, with the low piano notes and the high strung cello. If there's one thing that was of consistent quality from beginning to end, it's the soundtrack. There are some actors who can make a bad script work, but Matt Damon is not one of them. His performance feels very phoned in. It's almost like he didn't want to be there. He was probably thinking about how much better it would be to be working on another Jason Bourne movie than whatever this movie was supposed to be. This movie had no plot. It was just a series of random events that had very little connection to each other. One of the major plot points is that this black family moves into the neighborhood. And since this is a mostly white populated area in the 60s, you can bet they're going to hammer in the racial issue. But that subplot contributes nothing to the overall story. It's like, hey look, people were racist back then. Okay, back to the main plot. The events of this movie are so loosely tied together, you're not sure which parts you're supposed to follow. Most of the scenes are just pointless. They're there to fill a 100 minute runtime. That's what this movie is. All filler, but very, very, very little substance. The way the script was written keeps you confused as to whether or not you should be rooting for Gardner. Is he a good guy who does terrible things, or is he a garbage human being with no remorse? For a good hour, we think that he's a good guy who's just done some bad things, but then in the final act, it's hinted that he's a borderline sociopath. The movie never confirms either of those things, because Gardner's killed off and the movie ends before we get an answer. And Margaret had so little character development that we don't know how we're supposed to feel when she's killed off. Yep, Matt Damon dies in this movie, and Julianne Moore dies twice. I did not feel bad spoiling that. I was confused as to what Suburbicon was supposed to be. Is it a dark satire about life in the suburbs in the 60s? Is it a gritty thriller about a man's descent into madness? A commentary on racism? Or is it trying to be a mishmash of all three? Doesn't matter which option you take because it has the same conclusion. This movie sucks. The script is terrible, the plot goes nowhere, Matt Damon doesn't even try, the direction is all over the place, and the tone is more unbalanced than Thor Ragnarok. 
The Coen brothers aren't bad writers, George Clooney isn't a bad director, and Matt Damon isn't a bad actor, so who gets the blame for this? Personally, this one falls on the Coen brothers for letting Clooney and Hensloff into the writer's room. Had this been a purely Coen brothers script, I have no doubt this movie would have been much, much better. Maybe we'll find out why we got this piece of cinematic trash, or maybe we won't. Either way, don't move into Suburbicon. Skip it. <clears throat> Alright, that's my review of Suburbicon. Have you seen it? Hopefully not. If you have, leave your answer by commenting down below. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're new. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe leave a like. And as always, this is the Canadian Movie Buff saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. <gasps> See ya!